Welcome back to D&C in 23. I'm Dave. We're going to talk about a fantastic second night in Chicago. The last time I was with you guys, the vibes were bad. Uh, it was like 11.30 at night. Uh, my microphone messed up the recording, so what you heard from the last time you were with me was actually take two. I was pronouncing the town at Star Lake wrong. I thought it was Burgettstown, hard G. It's Burgettstown. Uh, and oh yeah, our artist in residence had been arrested that night. Much better vibes today to talk about night two in Chicago from June 10th, 2023. The 12th show of this final tour. And let's get on with the show. It was a good one. It was Dead & Company's 10th and final time playing at this venue at Wrigley Field, which they've hit for two night runs in 2017, 2019, 2021, 2022, and now this year in 2023. Uh, this venue is the site of some amazing Dead & Company shows. Alex kind of broke that down in night one's episode that came out yesterday. Um, that night two from 2021 uh, is one of my favorite Dead & Company shows, and I know that that's one of the masses favorite Dead & Company shows as well. Before we hear from our boots on the ground, I, I just want to talk about something we don't talk enough about on this show, and that's the posters. The posters for uh, this two-night run at Wrigley were, were pretty cool ones. Um, gold and purple color set, uh, so a little outside the norm of the blue and red. Uh, for example, the Atlanta poster um, was very blue and red heavy, which is is good and is normal, uh, but these ones were gold and purple, and each night had depicted a different half of uh, Wrigley Field and the Dancing Bears Shakedown Street right outside Wrigley. So night one looked at the left half of Wrigley Field, night two at the right. Night one had uh, the Skull and Roses just chilling outside of Wrigley at the the Shakedown Street. And she was chilling in her Birkenstock sandals. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, the other good thing about that first night's poster, one of the Dancing Bears Shakedown Street tents is called Hetty Spaghetti. That, that was entertaining. Night two was just the other half of Wrigley Field. Uh, it had a skeleton with a baseball and a baseball bat and more Dancing Bears perusing Shakedown outside. I thought the best stand on night two's poster was Bertha's Boutique. I thought that was pretty clever. Posters were by AJ Misthay, uh, and they were they were very entertaining and, and very very cute with the dancing bears. Um, and the iconic red sign outside Wrigley Field on both posters said um, Dead and Company, the final tour. We poked around and heard from some of our boots on the ground um, that this was just an amazing show. I mean, duh. Dead & Company in Chicago. What more could you want? Our friend Zach Cropper was in the barn for both shows. Uh, I asked him if he could break it down for me, his thoughts, and he used a skiing analogy. Uh, so if you ski like me, then you'll you'll know what he's talking about here. He said, they're not sitting back in their boots anymore. They're leaning into the hill, which means they're not like making any cautious turns or playing it safe. They are going for it, and they went for it tonight. Before we talk about the set list, I just want to talk about some outfits. John Mayer was rocking a Mickey Mouse shirt, and if you've watched any of the tour, either been fortunate enough to see it in person, um, caught some of the nugs streams or you tune into the free set one and set two openers that are on the dead and company youtube page you'll know that oteal has been rocking some face paint every night of the tour and his face paint last night was hands down the best that he's done yet uh, it looked like sunbeams were coming out of his entire face and that was really really neat i can't confirm this but i saw on reddit that his wife painted his face before the show last night don't know if that's true. If it is true, that's really, really neat. So let's dive in. Set one at 639, they take the stage. Trucking into Smokestack Lightning, back into trucking, 
Althea, Mississippi Half Step, High Time, Into All Along the Watchtower, Into Bertha, Into Good Lovin' to close set one. This was exciting when Truckin' became the first song after they were noodling around. The last time they had kind of noodled around for a jam before they opened a show was when they opened the show a couple nights before um, with Hell in a Bucket. They did like a two-minute jam and then dove into that. I was I didn't think Hell in the Bucket was coming again so soon. And then when the truckin' magic started from John Mayer, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. I thought the truckin' was pretty good. I thought the Smokestack Lightning was pretty and good. They got groovy with it. John Mayer and the Blues is just a a perfect combination. Bob was really into the Smokestack, uh, as was Jay Lane. He was going nuts on the drums, and it made for a good time. The High Time was good as well with O'Teal singing. The Internet's Consensus, and unfortunately, due to tech issues, I wasn't able to listen to the the ending suite of set one, which is unfortunate because the internet's consensus is that the All Along the Watchtower was unreal and just an absolute clinic out there and the highlight of set one. This is corroborated by um, a follow on Twitter I recommend who kind of posts the songs that are being played at 21st Century Dead. He said, quote, nothing but fire. Truck and smokestack combo was a great start. Hot Althea, O'Teal crushed high time. Watchtower was unbelievable. Can't wait for the second set. He tweeted that uh, out during the set break. And that second set, help on the way into Slipknot, into Franklin's Tower, St. Stephen, into Drums in Space, into Uncle John's Band, into Cumberland Blues, into a reprise of the other one. They had played the other one uh, in night one, just verse one. This reprise was verse two. Into Morning Dew. And then a triple encore of Broke Down Palace, the play-in reprise. Again, they opened night one with play-in, and here they come back, and they almost close the entire run of shows with play-in. And that play and reprise went into one more Saturday night, ending right at 10.30 Central. The Help Slip Frank, I mean, to start it off, Mayor was getting after it, but the MVP of the Help on the Way was O'Teal. He was all over the fretboard, and near the end of Help, like right as they're moving into Slipknot, Either Mickey or Bobby must have said or done something because O'Teal like almost fell over laughing. He was just having a grand old time. Uh, into the Slipknot, which I think was the highlight of this Help Slip Frank, there was excellent interplay between Mickey and Jay sharing drum fills in the beginning um, during Slipknot when the guitar parts pause uh, and then the drums get to fill in a little bit. Mickey got to go first, and then Jay got to follow his lead, and then Mickey went again. And then at about the halfway point of Slipknot, it got jazzy, and then it got good. Mare was relentless. Comenti was all over the piano. I mean, he was flying around. And at the end of the song, Jay Lane was just doing some great stuff. He's got this feel where he can fill in the in-between notes while keeping the tempo up quicker than in previous years. And I, we really appreciate what Jay Lane is doing on the kit back there. I noticed that at the end of Slipknot, Mare's headphones were off. He usually wears the over-the-ear headphones to like help him hear how he sounds. And those were off. At some point, the camera panned to Jay Lane, and then they panned back to John Mayer, and the headphones were were gone. They were around his neck. And so he was just taking in the, the pure sound of what was coming on off on stage. And then they rolled into the Franklin's Tower. Um, this is my favorite dead song. Just always so, so lovely to hear. John Mayer was jumping up and down at one point because he was playing so good. And uh, 
there are some nights where Bob looks like he's really trying to direct traffic and he's got a serious face and uh, you're not sure how he's feeling on stage. This was not one of those nights. Bobby had a smile on his face. He looked like he was having fun. Uh, and then he broke out into a big smile in particular when Mayor saying, uh, you better harvest wind. So that helps with Frank was was really nice. Um, the crowd was into St. Stephen. After the drum space on the picture posted by Matt Bush on Instagram, the Uncle John's band was written in. It was not typed out. So I think that that Uncle Johnny was a little improv. Um, and that warms my heart because it shows that they're they're not sticking to the script and they're going where the music takes them. And and that's one of my favorites. To quote at 21st Century Dead again when kind of recapping the second set, yet another insane second set. Help Slip Frank was intense and so tight, and then Steven got weird thanks to Jeff. Huge beam zones, and Cumberland was incredible. Cumberland has been a song that the entire tour, when it's been played, people have been saying that that's been like the highlight of the show. Um, another song that kind of fits that bill as they love each other which they've played three or four times now and every time it's been like a standout of the set one that they play it in Cumberland's kind of been a standout they played it both in sets one and two and it's been a standout whenever they play it the triple encore is awesome broke down and then you had a feeling a play and reprise was coming um, just because they opened night one with it they choose to bring it in between broke down in one more Saturday night. Um, just excellent, excellent playing and a fun, unique, and upbeat set to um, Uncle John's Band is a dance song. Cumberland Blues is a dance song. One More Saturday Night at the End is a dance song. The Help Slip Frank was was fantastic. So just, you know, it's more Chicago magic for a band that seems to put on a great show every time they go to Chicago. And their last stint in Chicago, no different. All good stuff. Um, so whether you caught night one or night two, or if you were lucky enough to catch both at Wrigley, um, know that we are jealous and know that you guys saw some, some great playing. The band's next show is Tuesday, June 13th, when they'll be back to Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, to kind of put a wrap on their Midwest run. After Cincinnati, they go back to the East Coast. They go to Philly and then to New York State after that. So the Cincy show will kind of be the, the farewell to the Midwest. And what are they going to play in that Cincy show? Time for America's favorite new game show that no one in your family has ever heard of, Estimated Profits. If this is your first time to DNC in 23, welcome. Here's how, the, how this works. Based on the last few set lists, Alex and I will try to predict two songs each that Dead & Company will play at their next show, at the show in Cincinnati, Ohio. Alex got the first pick for uh, the second show in Chicago, uh, and he scored with his Franklin's Tower pick. But that means that I get the first pick for the Cincinnati show. And I'm going a little off the beaten path. I'm going with a song that I got to see in the Charlotte show a couple weeks ago that they haven't played since. Uh, that's The Wheel. I'm taking The Wheel with my first pick. I think it's time that that comes out in Cincinnati. Alex has an interesting combo that he picked with his next two. His selections were Easy Wind and Shakedown Street. Uh, if you are into stats, um, you'll appreciate this. This is Alex's first time selecting Shakedown as a prediction song for any of our estimated profits guesses. Uh, and I think that that's a good omen. I think if you're going to the Cincinnati show, that Shakedown guess by Alex uh, bodes well. I think that's a good sign of things to come. I get the last pick to wrap up Estimated Profits, and I'm going with China Cat Sunflower into I Know You Rider. They played a lot of big ones in Chicago. They opened up their 
jam repertoire, but they did not play Cat Rider in Chicago. Also, again, if you're into stats, you're in the right place. Also, the last Cat Rider played in Cincinnati back in 2018. So I think the folks at Riverbend Music Center in Cincy are due for a China Cat Sunflower, and I know you, Ryder. I think those are points coming on the board to me. Speaking of the board, the leaderboard, uh, just want to do a little update of the Estimated Profits leaderboard. We do have a leader who is alone in first place uh, with 13 points. We have a nice three-way tie for second with 12 points and one in third place right now with 11. Yes, I know it's technically fifth place because there are three people tied for second, but you know what I mean. There are a couple others with 10 points. Alex has nine, and I have eight. But if you, this is your first time listening and you have zero points, it is not too late to join in at all. 13 points is about two weeks worth of shows making some good guesses. And we're not even at the halfway marker of the tour yet. So there is plenty of time to come on in, play the game with us, and get some points on the board. If you do want to play along, please drop us a note on Twitter, at Working Man's Pod. You could reply or comment on Instagram, at Working Man's underscore pod. If you go to the Dead & Company subreddit, you will see the big post with our predictions. Um, you could comment below that. That's where we're getting a majority of our guesses coming in. In all of those forums, you'll see the picture posted with our podcast colors, with our predictions. Um, the other way to do it is to email us at workingmanspod at gmail.com, and we will tally your answers. A couple things on this. One, please get your answers in before set one starts. You can't email us five minutes after they start predicting the first song correctly. That's, that's not going to do it. Also, you get two guesses if you guess, if you like predict the entirety of set one with your comment or your message, one, I applaud you, I commend you, but you only get two. How this has been working is that I just take the first two songs that one may have listed out. Uh, there are a couple individuals who have done that, and I just want to put that on record that we applaud and commend you predicting the whole set or the whole show um, but for this game's purposes i've just been taking the first two dead songs that i see to go into our spreadsheet why do all this why play along well if you end the tour with the highest score you're going to win some some prizes and some working man's pod stuff which hey that's exciting free stuff is is always the best stuff uh, so come play along that will do it for this episode of DNC in 23 with half of WP. Uh, the other half, Alex, will be back on Wednesday. That's Wednesday, June 14th, to talk about all things from the Cincinnati show uh, coming up on Tuesday, the 13th. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, know our love will not fade away.